You can see this. Not yet, Randy. You're not recording, right? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guests today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi. What's going? We are on round two today. Two. Number two. Yes, absolutely. And so today is always a great day to have chief chat, but uh, it's even a better day to have two chief chats. So um, as we round out this second chief chat and uh, dive into our Thanksgiving holiday, we have a guest that has an inspiring story that draws so many parallels to my per own personal life. To be honest with you. Um, it, it really shows you how life go, uh, comes full circle. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Thanks, Chief. Today's guest rose from humble beginnings to an illustrious 44-year career with the Air Force, culminating with his service as the Vice Chief of Staff for the Air Force. He is a self-proclaimed dark horse, so it's fitting that dark horse is the title of his life story. The book was released last week, and it is available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. Please help us welcome retired General Larry Spencer. Hey. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Hey, hey, sir. Uh, well, welcome to the show, and we are honored to have you with us today. Can you let uh, let the folks know where you're joining us from? Sure. I am in beautiful Alexandria, Virginia, in my office. Uh, I'm currently the president of the Armed Forces Benefit Association and Five Star Life Insurance Company. Um, so I'm here in Alexandria, just out, out of D.C. Uh, and again, as I said, happy and honored to be here. Awesome. Thank you. And congratulations on your new book, Dark Horse. It's receiving wide praise and acclaim. And we want our viewers to know it's available tax free at shopmyexchange.com. So, sir, what has it been like releasing your book during a global pandemic? Well, it's, you know, it's been a little bit of a challenge, obviously, uh, in a pandemic. You know, you can't get out and really uh, visit with people and, and uh, talk about your book like you would like to. But it's OK. I mean, you know, we are you know, we, we're strong, we're a strong country and we're a strong Americans. So we're working our way through it. So yeah, it, it's been okay, a little bit of a delay, but uh, I really can't complain. Excellent, I'm so glad to hear that. So General Spencer, can you um, share with us what your early life was like and then what, what called you to serve? Yeah, great question. So uh, my early life, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask you to use your imagination here for a second, uh, because <laughs> when I was growing up uh, in the uh, and, you know, in the in the 70s or so, as I got into high school, um, picture this. I, I know it's hard to believe, but you have to picture me with a huge Afro uh, bell bottom pants uh, <laughs> and my, my, you know, high platform shoes. And, and my my mother actually referred to me as a hippie. Um, but I was, you know, so I was in the middle of the uh, anti-Vietnam protests, in the middle of the civil rights movement, a lot going on around the country, uh, a lot of confusion. Uh, I was in high school uh, playing sports. A lot of uh, my primary sport was football and I uh, had a lot of uh, uh, football scholarship offers. Uh, the challenge was, though, my father, uh, who was an Army NCO, uh, didn't really have any college experience, and my mother, who had not graduated high school at that time, didn't have any college experience either. So it was a very confusing time to me. Uh, and frankly, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. And uh, I found myself 
uh, in a mall, a local mall here, uh, just in Maryland, uh, walking through the mall. And, and again, use your imagination here. I had just purchased a purple jumpsuit uh, with matching purple <laughs> high platform shoes and a big <laughs> wide brim hat, if you can imagine that. Uh, and I was walking through the mall uh, with my bag and I stopped at an Air Force recruiter's office and just started looking at the airplane pictures because I'd always been fascinated with airplanes. And the recruiter walked out and asked me in. Uh, and so, you know, like I like to tell people, I sort of stumbled into the recruiter's office. And when I stumbled out of there, I was in the Air Force. Uh, it, it was nothing that I had planned. It's, it's inexplicable today. My parents didn't know anything about it. Uh, but that's how I joined the United States Air Force, just by chance, and being at the, in the, at the right place at the right time. Wow, sir. Um... Well, it sounded like your early life sounded like you were an extra for the movie, uh, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. That, that's the first <laughs> thing that popped in my mind. <laughs> Man, well, just, okay. Just to, give you, just to give you that image, uh, there are people who referred to me back then as, as Sly Stone. So that'll give you the image. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm trying, and I'm trying to imagine your first haircut at BMT. Because <laughs> cause if, if, you, if you, I'm sure that it's a quick one. And they whiz through it, your head, but if you got if you got a bunch of it in there, it's probably not that comfortable. Right. No, I, I remember that like it was yesterday. I sat in the chair and watched it all fall on the floor. So yeah, that's absolutely what happened. Awesome, awesome. So you you served for forty four years. My goodness, that's 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 a commitment of 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 the you know ultimate ultimate kind. But um, you were one of only nine African Americans to earn four stars. So. Your last assignment uh, was at the Pentagon as the 37th Vice Chief of Staff of the Air Force. Just that's incredible. I mean, just uh, and, and I, I know a little bit about your story. You went from enlisted to to um, to the Vice Chief of Staff, which you know there's a lot of enlisted folks out there that that can can draw some inspiration from that, or just to know that it's it's possible. So uh, I, th I think that that in itself is is a story in itself. So uh, can you tell me what, what assignment stands out to you the most and, and why? Yeah, great question. Uh, the every assignment I had, I loved, and, and I'm and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, just to say it. I, I mean, it, it, I really mean it. I enjoyed every single assignment I had, uh, in every job I had in the Air Force. Uh, but if I had to pick one, it was probably Squadron Commander uh, when I was at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina. I was the uh, Comptroller Squadron Commander. Uh, and I, the reason I enjoyed it looking back so much was two reasons. One is it was my first real command. So I just loved that. Uh, the squadron did really well because as soon as I arrived, uh, we entered into Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And my squadron, along with the entire wing, was very engaged in that war. And so to work with my squadron during wartime was something I'll never forget. And it was. Uh, something that I got a lot out of and I was really proud of our squadron uh, at the way they performed. Uh, the other reason why I enjoyed that assignment because squadron command is unique. It's, it's, it's a place where you're a commander, but you're still really close to the mission. So once you move up to group or wing command, you know, you've got group and wing command or, or squadron commanders to kind of get the job done along with their uh, their senior NCOs. But as a squadron, uh, you get to really work with the troops, which is really what I treasure. You mentioned my enlisted time. I have to tell you, you know, what I, uh, I, I, when I reflect back on my career, some of my best time in, in the Air Force was enlisted. I, I really enjoyed uh, being enlisted, and I've got a lot of respect for our enlisted force. Uh, by the way, the, you know, our adversaries, uh, they fear us because of our enlisted force. I mean, the, you know, those are the folks who get the job done, who are out there every day uh, getting the mission done. And so I, I so treasure my enlisted time. And to get the opportunity to work with airmen, to work with our uh, enlisted members, our, our senior uh, senior list of members, our chiefs, uh, was just a treasure for me. So if I had to pick one, it would be uh, at my, my tour squadron commander. Yes, yes, sir. And I, I kind of want to echo what you um what you mentioned there, because uh, I, I mentor a lot of folks and, and they kind of ask me that same question. And I always talk about uh, squadron superintendent. And so as a squadron superintendent, like you said, uh, you're you're uh, matched up with the squadron commander, but it's absolutely the most rewarding job 
Now it's it's probably the most stressful at the same time because correct, you got a, a million things going on. You got to highlight the good stuff and then you got to take care of the stuff that's not so good. Uh, but and it, it's probably the most time consuming. But uh, there's there's no other uh, kind of tier where you're going to get that relationship with people on the on the ground level. And I, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, I love being in the mix with the folks, what they're doing on the on the ground level. And uh, like I said, that there's no other job like being a squadron superintendent and, and kind of like you said, as a squadron commander, the, the same the same uh, kind of intrinsic value that comes with that. Absolutely. And by the way, uh, I, you know, I, I, I was just sitting here, I was reflecting back on on that tour. Um, and I know you all know this, but I, I, I want to reinforce it. Uh, the, the, the part that APs plays in the military, particularly in, in this case, the Army and the Air Force, is just incredible. I mean, um, you know, I had 22 moves uh, during my, uh, my career. And the BX slash PX system was something that always felt like home. You know, every base we went to, there was a BX there, and there were always friends there, and it, it just felt like home. Uh, I'll never forget. I mean, you know, the, in, in, during Desert Storm, <laughs> you know, you're pushing all those troops and equipment forward, and the next thing you know, you turn around, and there's a there's a little BX there uh, in a war zone. Uh, again, providing that, not only providing what troops need uh, from day to day, but providing that sense of family and that sense of of you know just being at home so i want to thank you all for what you do because uh you know the APs play such a strong part of the military mission uh and and i i certainly appreciate it i know others do as too by the way my wife appreciates it and I, and most of you can probably probably attribute most of your salary to my to my wife's like my, my wife's fondness for the for the bx system px system We'll remind your wife that Black Friday is just days away. So shopbyexchange.com, Black Friday, tax-free. Right, trust me. Trust me. No, she already knows. <laughs> All kidding aside, thank you. Thank you for that compliment. That means a lot to, to us and to our teammates who work around the world to make sure that our troops have what they need to stay ready and resilient. And turning back to your back to your book, Dark Horse, it's more than a memoir. It is a blueprint for resiliency. What is your advice to others on overcoming challenges and adversity? Yeah, great question. Uh, because a, a lot of folks ask me why I wrote the book Dark Horse, and really the the message messages in the book. I hope folks will take from it uh, is determination, uh, faith. Never, ever giving up. Never giving up. Um, and, and and I think and the reason I reveal so much of my own personal life story in the book was I think it's important for people to understand that life is not perfect. There's always going to be challenges. Um, you know, the, life is not like uh, you know for most of us the Cosby Show or I'm showing my age now, but you know, Leave It to Beaver Show. I mean, the life is not that perfect. Uh, and most folks don't grow up in homes that are perfect. They grow up in homes that have a lot of love and support, but they're not perfect. Uh, and so I, I wanted to make use my life example uh, for those who are like me that, you know, had maybe a, a little bit of a, maybe grew up in a tough neighborhood or, or maybe didn't go to the best schools or didn't have the mentorship uh, or leadership they, they may have wanted to have. But the, the point is that, that, need not stop you. If you stay hanging there, if you're determined, um, if you always get up and realize you're gonna get knocked down, but continue to get up, you can be successful. Look, it's not about making four stars, it's not about making chief. It's about realizing your full potential and whatever you have to contribute, whatever gifts you have, leave it out on the field. Uh, and I tell folks a lot of times using a football analogy you can't score a touch, touchdown if you're sitting on the bench. So I try to encourage people, jump into life, get everything you, are, you can out of it. A former boss of mine, he happened to be a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, someone asked him when he was going to retire, and his answer was, well, when I die, I'm going to be dead a long time. 
So I might as well get everything out of life while I'm while I'm living. And, and that's sort of my attitude. Uh, I'm going to go for it uh, and try to do as much as I can to help others uh, and to try to be an example as I, if I can. Uh, but but I just enjoy life and, and I encourage everyone to just get as much out of life as they can. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, you mentioned mentors. So you, you must have had some great ones along the way in your career um, who who helped mold you into a phenomenal leader. So what would be your biggest piece of advice for young service members as they're just getting started or, you know, embarking on their careers? Yeah, I mean, mentors for me uh, meant everything. Uh, and by the way, I still have mentors today um, to, to have someone or, or, or many mentors in my case, uh, some people that you can lean on, people who will tell you uh, what you need to hear, not necessarily what you wanna hear, uh, folks you can bounce things off of. Um, they help keep you up when you're down and, and they help you help to keep you not from getting too, too far up and think too much of yourself, uh, really key. Uh, and so obviously for me personally, my parents were mentors, watching my, my parents get up, my father in particular get up and go to work every day, work long hours do whatever you could to, to support our family. That example I've got, uh, you know, spending summers on the farm with my grandfather, watching that work ethic, uh, watching him go to work every day and realizing the, the uh, challenges he had. Uh, but to just, just give you one example, the, the, a mentor that stands out for me happened to be a Chief Master Sergeant. His name was Chief Master Sergeant Brown. Um, he mentored me very early when I was a one striper and at, at my first assignment at Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina. Uh, and, and just to sort of shorten the story, um, I arrived at Pope Air Force Base about as green as you can get, had never really left the D.C. area, uh, got, just got off a Greyhound bus and rode out to the base, didn't know anything about the Air Force. And I, I was on my way the first duty day that I, re I arrived to the dining hall, and he yelled out to me, Airman, uh, because he could tell, here I am in service dress and you know back in those days we it was in winter time we had this big coat overcoat it was called the horse blanket i wish they still made those because that was a great coat overcoat um and i had my green duffel bag so he knew i was a, de a deer in the headlights and when he yelled out to me airman i did what what most airmen did back then i turned around and headed the other way because i wanted no parts of a chief i mean I, you know I, I was just scared to death and then he yelled out, you know, Airman, don't you walk away from me. So I had no choice. And again, to show you how green I was, I ran over to him, stood at attention, and I saluted and gave the, you know, reported as ordered. Uh, and so he said, look, um, you, know, uh, I, I, don't, you know, don't worry about that. But he took me under his wing. He knew I was the green. He knew I didn't know what to do or where to go. After he, so he walked in and had breakfast with me in the dining hall. Again, I was afraid to eat. I, Thought I might use my fork the wrong way, uh, but but he was just a great guy. He took me out after breakfast, put me in his truck uh, with my duffel bag, got me over to my first uh, assignment, and he stayed with me ever since. And and so, you know, mentors are both, I think, for at least from my mind, adopted, uh, and some of them adopt you. So in other words, he adopted me. But throughout my career, I adopted other folks as mentors just by their example. In a lot of cases, they never knew it. But I would just watch their example, not that I wanted to be like them or be them, but I, I, they impressed me. Uh, they were great airmen, and I just adopted them as, 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 uh, you know, as an example of how I should conduct myself. Yeah, so, sir, that, you, you bring up some excellent points. And, uh, and I always tell people, um, especially, you know, as as enlisted, we get a chance to mentor enlisted and officers, which is it, it, it's a, it's a it, you know it's a win win for for us. And um, I always tell folks that uh, you never know who you're mentoring. So at at uh you know at some some brand new airman that comes comes on base, uh, you could be that old crusty. And and I've heard it at so many retirement ceremonies or promotion ceremonies. People would always talk about the the crusty staff sergeant, the crusty master sergeant, or that that kind of help shape them into now they're a chief or now they're a general or now they're a, a, a colonel or so i just i've seen it so many times times again and so we i think we just really need to understand how much power we have when we mentor uh whether it's a young officer 
or as a young enlisted member that that person could be uh, the 39th vice chief of staff of the Air Force one day and not not knowing that at that point in time, but just, you know, just just saying that your leadership style is going to influence that person and they're going to take some tools from your toolbox and use it as they go and and, and ascend to their highest level. So I think it's I think it's just uh, like I said, I'm I've been blessed to be in the military. Uh, you know, I know you did 44. I'm I'm at 24. So I, 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 I still got, got a lot. Go. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, man, it's it's the military just put me in so many great positions to to meet so many great people and and and, and be blessed to be on their path to wherever they uh, you know wherever they end up. Whether it, like I said, this success is not a rank or like you said before, it's not a rank or a destination. It's it's the journey. I think the success is the actual journey itself. Yeah, you're so right. And and, and in fact, uh, you, you know the uh, I I spoke recently at a chief induction ceremony, and one of the points I tried to make to them was, you never know if there's an Airman Spencer sitting out there, uh, just waiting for you to come and lead them in the right direction. Uh, and you mentioned something else that sort of struck a chord with me. Um, when I, you know, I was the first one in my family to become a commissioned officer. My entire family, uncles, father, grandfather, all served in the military. Many served for a career. None had ever been officers, so I was the first to get a commission. And just a, a, a quick story. When my father picked me up at uh, Dulles Airport, in fact, uh, outside D.C., uh, when I returned from OTS, uh, and it's kind of hard for me to even talk about it now, but back then, that was back before 9-11. So you could literally drive up to the front of the airport and pick someone up. He drove up, he got out of his car and he came around and saluted me, which was just incredible for me. But he also said something to me that stuck with me. He said, look, you're a second lieutenant now. Uh, the, the, the best advice I can give you is, you know, go find some good NCOs, strong NCOs and help them guide you and teach you how to be an officer. And that's the first thing I did at my first assignment. I went and found me some senior NCOs and I said, look, I'm, I'm a lieutenant. Uh, I need help. Uh, don't be afraid to tell me if I'm going wrong. Uh, don't be afraid to walk in and close the door and say, lieutenant, it, you don't do it that way. Uh, and, and they did. And I, and I, I can't tell I, a chief, I am so appreciative uh, because I can't tell you a number of times where a chief would pull me aside and say, sir, lieutenant, you know, we don't do it that way. Here's a better way to do it. And I, I'm just so grateful. And that happens every day. And that, that to me is what the Air Force and the military is all about. Exactly. No, it, no, go, yeah. go ahead. Chief. No, you go ahead, Chief. You're good. Oh, no, 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 sir. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm, like I said, I've I enjoy my military service. I enjoy the people I get a chance to work alongside. Uh, and you know, you just like I said, you, your book and just kind of your path in life, it just hits so many. It hits home for me in so many ways. Uh, just kind of how life came full circle for you and all that stuff. So thanks for sharing. Thank you. We do have the military community watching from around the world. What message would you like to share with our service members, military families, and veterans headed into Thanksgiving? I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, first of all. And I want to just say thank you so much for your service. You know, that's become a, a, a phrase that is maybe overused, um, but our service members need to understand it, it is not. It is heartfelt. Thank you all for your service. Um, you know, you are the heroes of our country. Um, you are the one that keeps us safe. You are the reason we sleep well at night. Uh, and, and you're the one that's that's uh, standing up for right, standing up for our democracy. So just thank you so much for your service. Uh, we all as Americans just appreciate everything you're doing. And, and we wish you all a great holiday season. Sir, thank you for thank you for sharing those words. I I'm sure it means a lot to um, to our service members and families who are watching. Um, so speaking of, you're getting an amazing reception on our Facebook feed. We want to just pause for a moment and share uh, some of those comments with you. Uh, oh gosh. 
<laughs> Technology is great until it's not. Uh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> we have... We have actually Sergeant H. He says hello from Cairo, Egypt. Um, wow. Chris Ward from Dallas. He says legit American hero. What a career. Kyle says SJAFB, my old stomping grounds, 333rd FS. Um, Sandy says, hey, team. And Fahim says he's worked for the exchange for more than 14 years. And you're just, you're getting a lot of the likes and the love um, emojis on, on there as well. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. I, again, I'm humbled by that. Uh, I really am. But, you know, my, um, one of the statements I put in the book is, as I look back over my life, it, there's a, there's a saying that says, um, you know, there's two ways to live your life uh, as though um, as though there are no miracles or as though everything is a miracle. And in, in my life has been a series of miracles. Uh, there is no way uh, that that you could look at the way I started out uh, in the inner city in Southeast DC and could have predicted um, what my final destination would be within the Air Force. Um, a lot, I attribute a lot of that to uh, the Air Force itself because they, they provided uh, untold opportunities. I had uh, mentor after mentor that helped me and, and guide me. I had folks working for me that were really, really good and made me look good uh, and, and deserve much of the credit. Um, I, you know, I had my faith that I lean on that's very helpful for me. Uh, and so it's been a storybook career for me uh, and I don't take any credit for any of it. it it's been those that uh, have helped me, my family, uh, who has been so supportive and stuck with me throughout 22 moves. Uh, rarely complain, but 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 for, for very 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 supportive. And I just thank thank all of you out there. Again, if if you're well at wearing the, the Air Force uniform today, be proud of what you're doing. It, you know, I, I never look back. But if I could, I would. On. I don't know if it would fit, but I put the uniform on today and go back and serve in the Air Force because I, I loved it that much and, it, and it's that great of an organization. Well, sir, I'll tell you, uh, 44 years looks real good on you, though, because, uh, you, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you could uh, still do a couple more PT tests, so we, we, we can take you back if you want us to. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, again, it, 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 it's been enjoyable. And again, I, I can't thank you all enough for what you do. And I'm sincere about that. I mean, again, uh, you know, it, it got to the, it, it's gotten to the point now, even when we travel on leave, if, if I drive from here to North Carolina and I, you know, where my wife is from and we'll swing by, you know, Seymour Johnson or, or, you know, or, or a base, the first thing she wants to do is go to the BX. Don't ask me why, but she does. And I think the why, I think her why is, it's, it's home, it feels like home. And she feels comfortable there. Um, the folks there that the, they work in, the, in your stores are very hospitable and, and you know, they, they're very uh, uh, accommodating. And when we walk into a base exchange, you know, we both really feel at home. Yeah. Well, well sir, um, well, 85% of our, our folks that work at the exchange or have a military connection. So they, they absolutely, uh, have, are, are fully, fully invested in the military community, families, all, the whole whole nine yards. So uh, you, it's, it's family for serving family. And they, they love the mission. Every time I go to a store, they, they're freaking, uh, they've been here 25, 30 years. They're bragging about their son or their daughter that's in the military. It's just, it, it's a family atmosphere. And I don't think I really uh, understood that until I started working for this organization. So a big shout out to all the associates worldwide for the exchange you guys are amazing thank you for serving the best customers in the world the military community and they do it uh, with such class and grace and just love it's just a bunch of love that comes out of uh, uh serving uh those who serve so 
the, the, I just I think I got all the all the stuff right, uh, Julie. All the mottos that we have. I tried to grab them all. Yes, and, and put it all in. Yeah, yeah. Good job. But thank you, thank you, sir. And Julie, for, for the chief. Was that? I'm sorry. Yeah. Julie and I have a lot in common with General Spencer's wife. Oh, really? We love to go to the exchange. <laughs> yes, we love to go to the exchange every time we are near an installation. That's the first place we want to go. Let's go check out the exchange it is. here. Yes, it is fun. We enjoy it too. <laughs> it is. Well, so, they, so I general, hope you don't. I hope you don't spend as much money as my wife does. Otherwise, you'd be you'd be broke. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we want to talk about that. We can't talk about that. No, yes, sir. <laughs> Sir, don't just don't look at the bank account at all. Just don't right, look exactly. at it. It's, it's, exactly. it just just let, let 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 the military star card fly or whatever whatever it is they, whatever's going on. Yes. So, sir, uh, besides Dark Horse, what else is on the horizon for you? Uh, you know, it, it's I'm in a good place in my life because um, I I my focus right now is giving back, uh, and you know the organization that I'm president of now, the Armed Forces Benefit Association, Five Star Life Insurance. You know, we, we serve those who serve the nation. So we serve military and first responders and their families, federal workers. So to me, it's all about giving back. It's about mentoring. I, I still work with a lot of uh, folks in uniform uh, through mentoring programs, uh, work with a lot of local colleges. I, I've spoken with most of the high schools uh, in this area to try to help our youth, um, you know, uh, in mentorship uh, and help them. You know, when I was in high school, we didn't really have many mentors visit us. I don't want that to happen to the generation that's behind me and so it, it's great i love uh i love my life my you know loving having uh time to spend now with more with my family and my wife in particular uh, my kids are grown so i'm enjoying my grandkids so i'm at a good point i'm enjoying my life uh, my job uh but just and again reflecting back over the air force it was just such a great organization and and they it, it they treated me so well that I just feel an obligation to try to give back as much as I can. So that's really what I'm focused on right now. Enjoy life. You you deserve it after that 44 year career in the Air Force, giving back to our nation. You you deserve all that and more. So as a reminder to our viewers, it matters where you shop. General Spencer's memoir, Dark Horse, is available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. It would make a perfect gift this holiday season. General Spencer, where can we go to learn more about you and your book? Yeah, my uh, website is generallarryspencer.com. It's generallarryspencer, all one word, dot com. Awesome, sir. So, uh, so for everyone watching, you can find this episode, uh, like, subscribe, share, go to the Exchange uh, YouTube page and Spotify page uh, and, and send this uh, interview to your friends. Uh, get Dark Horse for a friend. Like I said, it's an inspiring story that kind of kind of shows that you you can start off in the, the main streets of D.C. with bell bottoms and platform <laughs> shoes and, 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 a, and a big afro and then end up, you know, being the vice chief of staff of the Air Force. It, it, it all comes uh you know through hard work perseverance and having community to lift you up so i mean i think he general spencer hit that home a lot about the community that uh or or the village that it took to raise a general larry spencer right the, it you know it takes i tell people it takes a village to raise an osby and and i can't i couldn't have gotten this far in life uh without the people around me so uh thank you so much for sharing your time with us sir today um like i said you you're an inspiration to, to all, especially myself. Uh, so thank you so much for the story. Thank for Mr. Wilkins. Big shout out to Mr. Rob Wilkins uh, that, that caught me at AFA this year in DC. And he's like, you gotta get General Spencer on your show. So uh, I, I already knew who General Spencer was uh, I, and I'm glad he was interested in being on the show uh, to, to talk about his, his awesome book. So thank you for that as well. Uh, but thank you, sir, so much. I appreciate you definitely. Thank you so much for having me and a happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you all have a great Christmas and a wonderful new year. Yes, sir. So if you don't mind uh, staying on the chat until uh, after we get off the live so we can say our formal goodbyes, but thank you all so much. Uh, we wish everybody out there watching Chief Chat a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, don't don't eat too much, you know, because uh, Vera Wang is apparently going to make me a suit. And so I got to be able to fit, <laughs> fit into it. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, it's all good. But thank you so much. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all the folks out there. Chief Chat out. Hello.